Okay, so as I mentioned uh, in 3.2.1, uh, we are going to be asked to prove in problem 3.3 the more general definition for Hermitian operators uh, in quantum mechanics, which is that given F and G in Hilbert space and a Hermitian operator Q, uh, we want to prove this statement right here. Uh, and we are told as a hint to let H equal F plus G and also to let H equal F plus I G for this statement. So let's start with the first thing which is, let's just say that h is equal to f plus g. Now let's see what where this leads us. So if we define this, you know, h with the inner product of q hat acting on h, this is going to equal the integral in our region of interest from a to b of h star multiplied by q hat times h. Expanding h, by our definition, we have f plus g star times q hat acting on f plus g. Then we just use distributive property and we get the integral from a to b of f plus g star times q hat f plus q hat g. And at this point, uh, we also distribute the star over into f and g individually, and then we can just multiply this via distributive property to get, uh, let's see, this is going to give us f star q hat f plus f star q hat g plus g star q hat f plus g star q hat g dx. And then if I split this into four individual terms, this is gonna give me four inner products. F Q hat F plus F Q hat G plus G Q hat F plus G Q hat G. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate the idea of Q effectively uh, being a Hermitian conjugate. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to define what the Hermitian conjugate actually is. So uh, let's split this out. I'm going to say, okay, instead of this, uh, let's define a Hermitian conjugate in terms of this inner product notation. So Q hat acting on H, inner product with H is equivalent to H acting on the Hermitian conjugate of Q acting on H like this. And if we write this out the full way, then this is gonna give us the integral from A to B of F star plus G star as before times Q hat Hermitian conjugate F plus Q hat Hermitian conjugate G dx. And if I distribute this out fully, then I'm gonna get the exact same thing uh, as up top, but only uh, now with sort of Q hat Hermitian conjugate instead of Q hat. So this is gonna give me F Q hat Hermitian conjugate F plus F Q hat Hermitian conjugate G plus G Q hat Hermitian conjugate F plus G Q hat Hermitian conjugate. Whoops, I forgot to write the dagger here. Uh, G. And then if I want to rewrite this in terms of standard Q notation, then I just bring this over to the left side again, flipping it effectively to get Q hat F, inner product with F, plus Q hat F, inner product with G, plus Q hat G, inner product with F, plus Q hat G inner product with G. And now, at this point, we can take advantage of the fact that Q hat is assumed to be a Hermitian conjugate, or sorry, is assumed to be a Hermitian operator, which means that this term that we defined at the bottom here, sorry, I can't find my mouse, yeah, this term we defined at the bottom here is actually exactly the same as this term defined at the top here, and we can set these two equations equal to each other. So, in that case, we're going to get that this is in fact equal to this.
And then, at this point, we can take advantage of the idea of Hermitian conjugates, and we can get rid of some stuff. Immediately, I see that this term and this term can get, get rid of because they're equal to each other, and immediately I see that this term and this term can, get, get, can be getting rid of because they are also equal to each other. And now, uh, let's see, what do I have left? I have inner product f with q hat g plus inner product g with q hat f is equal to inner product q hat f with g plus inner product q hat g with f. Okay, now technically these also cancel, right? You know, this term technically can cancel with this term, and this term can technically cancel with this term. But at that point, we would just get zero is equal to zero, and that gives us sort of a trivial solution. Remember, our goal is to prove this. So the fact that taking advantage, the fact that what we've done here by following the hint, which is that we set h is equal to f plus g, and this gives us an equation, and then we take advantage of, you know, this idea of a Hermitian conjugate, set them equal to each other to define that Q is in fact a Hermitian operator, is going to give us this equation which relates inner products between F and Q with each other. This suggests that to actually solve, to get this identity, we're going to have to do the same thing, this time defining H is equal to F plus IG instead. And basically this is going to give us a second equation that's similar to this. And that's going to give us a system of two equations, and that by solving it, somehow we're going to be able to get this result. So, uh, let's see if we can get that. I'm going to write the second part in red, and I'm going to say, okay, now let's let h equal f plus ig. So, if we do that, and we do the exact same proof as before, we're going to get, starting with the inner product between h with qh, this is going to give us the integral from a to b, of f plus ig complex conjugate times q hat f plus q hat g moving the complex conjugate inside via distributive property we're going to get f star minus ig star because remember that the positive i becomes a negative i under a conjugation multiplied by q hat f plus q hat g now, if we split this up into four terms like before, this is going to give us, once again, four inner products. So let's see, this is going to give us f q hat f, uh, and then we're going to get minus i uh, g q hat f, and we're going to get, I'm sorry, I'm doing my distributed property out of order, forgive me. Let me just reset this real quick. Uh, so this term multiplied by this term gives us that. Now I want f star multiplied by q hat g, so this is going to give me f q hat g plus f q hat g. Yeah. And then minus i g q hat f minus i g q hat g is that correct f star and f f star and g yeah f star and f f star and g yep okay uh next i'm going to do the same thing as before, what I'm going to define now, q hat h defined against h, this is going to equal h q hat dagger h. And then, let's see, what's this going to give me? This is going to give me integral from a to b, f plus, or no, f star minus i g star. Ah, you know what? I just realized, silly me, I forgot to include an i here. So let's do that real quick. ig, this is going to give me ig over here. Okay, let's redo this whole thing. This is going to give me, let's see, uh, 
f q hat f plus i f q hat g minus i g q hat f and then two i's make a negative so plus g q hat g is that correct uh, I F G minus I G F plus G. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Now going back to this F minus I G, uh, multiplied by Q hat F plus I G, sorry, I Q hat G. Let's add the dagger symbols, Just, you know, complex or not complex, but Hermitian conjugates. This is going to give me see um, same thing as above but the only difference being that the Q is going to get replaced with uh, the complex or Hermitian conjugate version uh, and then if I want to move the Q hat around so this is going to give me F Q hat conjugate F plus I F Q hat conjugate G minus I G Q hat conjugate f plus g q hat conjugate g and then I'm just gonna revert this so this is gonna give me q hat f with f plus i times q hat f with g minus i times q hat g with f plus Q hat G with G, just like that. And now, uh, once again, I can combine these via the concept of being Hermitian. So setting these, assuming that Q is a Hermitian operator and setting these two equations equal to each other, I'm gonna get this term right here is going to equal this term right here. And then via Hermitian conjugates, uh, via the definition of Hermitian conjugates, uh, which we defined earlier on, because remember, the only thing we have here is that this is valid. We don't necessarily know that this is valid yet. So this is all we have right now. By using this definition here, we can cancel out this term right here, uh, and this term right here, and then this term right here with this term right here. So what we have left is getting rid of the i's, because there's an imaginary on every term, we can distribute that out, we get f q hat g minus g q hat f is equal to, sorry, get rid of, get rid of the i's, q hat f g minus q hat g f, just like that. Uh, F, G, G, F, F, G, G, F, yeah. Okay, and now we have two equations. And as we've talked about earlier, uh, the hint sort of implies that we want to solve the system of equations that we have here in terms of each other and get a result from that. So from this, let's see. Immediately, there's some things I can cancel. If I add these together, these two cancel and these two cancel. So what I'm left with is two F Q hat G. Let me just emphasize I'm adding these two together is equal to two times Q hat F G. Getting rid of the two, we get F Q hat G is equal to Q hat F G. And this is exactly what we were trying to prove. And with that, we are done with this problem. So, uh, Let's recap this. Basically, we followed this hint blindly, pretty much just letting Griffiths sort of lead us for the start of this. Setting h equal to f plus g, plugging it into the definition of an inner product, getting this equation, and then sort of recognizing that sort of this implies that the fact that we get this equation implies that we're going to have to try and uh, sort of get uh, a second equation from which we can then combine the two via a system of equations and get this resulting equation over here. 
the problem with that is that we have these extra terms, you know, f inner product with f and g inner product with g that we can't seem to get rid of. So to actually get rid of them, we're actually going to create a system of four equations, quote unquote, not really four, because technically we're always going to be solving for two at a time. But technically, overall, it's a system of four equations. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to rewrite this in terms of a Hermitian conjugate. And by doing that, we get this new equation over here. Uh, and then by the definition defined over here, which is that given that the two equations are the same, h and h, or f and f, or g and g, whatever, as long as the function in question is the same, these two are in fact equal for a Hermitian conjugate. This allows us to combine these two equations, basically getting rid of, you know, these two terms, the inner products of g with itself and the inner products of f with itself to get a formula that is purely in terms of inner products of f g's and inner products of g f's. Then we do the same thing with f plus i g, creating two more equations via complex conjugate definitions or Hermitian conjugate definitions, canceling out the f with f and g's with g's from these two equations to create uh, a new equation, once again, purely in terms of inner products between f and g and g and f, then taking these final two equations, combining them into a system of equations, solving for each other, and ultimately getting this result.